Matthew Bell with alzheimersproof.com. Today I wanted to go over several free internet resources that are available to help you with various different driving issues as they relate to Alzheimer's disease. Now I've been getting into this a little bit more in the past few days and I'm going to continue kind of on a series about this. Got a number of different trajectories. Obviously I canvas a lot on the channel from herbal interventions, dietary changes to changes and modifications around the home. But driving is one of those things that is really sort of a difficult subject to get into. And for a lot of people, in, including myself, when I dealt with my dad who had Alzheimer's disease, it was one of the foremost concerns. And so I don't want to neglect that. And I have a video on the legalities, kind of surveying some of the legal issues regarding driving. I've got one now on some of the indicators that your loved one might be unsafe behind the wheel. But I thought it would be a kind of a good idea to sketch the lay of the land in terms of internet or web-based resources. So the first category that I'm going to name for you is going to be just general information. And the first one that I will say, of course, is from the vaunted Alzheimer's Association website. Similarly, the Alzheimer's Society, which is kind of the United Kingdom's version of the Alzheimer's Association, I have no idea which one came first, this is not a hierarchical determination, but the Alzheimer's Society is more important in the United Kingdom or in England than it is over here, but it's essentially a very helpful repository and anybody on either side of the Atlantic can benefit from some of the information and they do have a helpful overview article on the ins and outs of driving. Another important player here is going to be Alzheimer's.net. They have an important and helpful article on driving with Alzheimer's disease. And of course, as I've mentioned in other videos, Alzheimer'sProof.com my website. Also, I have a number of different articles, including overviews of safety, of legalities, of the question of whether or not Alzheimer's drivers are more dangerous, and I recommend those to your attention. Now, a second category of website is going to be those that have to do with safety. Now, once again, on alzheimersproof.com, I do have kind of an introductory article on safety, but there are several other websites that you'll want to check out as well. The first is from the National Institute on Aging, which is part of the National Institutes of Health. And another important article on safety can be also found on the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration, or the NHTSA. That's part of the government. Again, we have a government website and they have a very helpful article on safety for driving with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Now, one thing you should be aware of if you're not already, and this is intuitive, but the dangers with Alzheimer's disease are going to progress as the disease progresses. So as the cognitive decline gets worse, obviously the danger and the safety element becomes a little bit different and more extreme. So for instance, in early stages of Alzheimer's, a person might still safely be able to operate a car, but by late stage Alzheimer's, the cognitive deficits are so severe that they probably can't even walk on their own or eat by themselves, let alone drive a car. So somewhere between being safe to drive a car and being unable to even ambulate or walk around to locomote, somewhere in that interval of decline, you're going to reach a point where the person is still able to move around, but they've gotten to a point in terms of their mental abilities, their reasoning, their judgment, their memory, their perception, where they are no longer safely able to operate a car. So in terms of some of those issues, once again, Alzheimer'sProof.com gets into it a little bit, but here you're going to want to visit the website from the Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic is a medical-oriented website. I've dealt with them in other videos, and the Mayo Clinic has an excellent piece on safety, and it's going to be well calibrated to the various different stages that a person's going to go through in this kind of cognitive impairment. Another is going to be an article from a website that covers the neurological aspects of this. Other diseases and conditions besides Alzheimer's can afflict a person's ability to drive. Those might include epilepsy, Parkinson's, neurological disorders of various kinds, and there's a helpful resource that I will point you toward that kind of touches on some of those aspects. Once you've got a kind of a fix on some of the safety issues, some of the medical related issues, another issue that kind of bubbles out from that is going to be the legal issue. And the legal issue in part is going to have to do with what liability do you as a family member, does the doctor as the medical professional, does the police officer, what liability do they have in allowing a person to continue to drive who might be questionable in terms of his or her ability to operate a motor vehicle. Now this is no small question here because in some states there is mandatory reporting. Physicians must disclose to the Department of Motor Vehicles in that state or whatever licensing body it is 
physicians must disclose conditions that compromise a person's ability to drive a car. Now, in those kinds of states, in a few of them, the physician can actually be held liable if he or she does not report a patient if, let's say, the patient gets into a car accident and causes damage, death, injury of some kind, then the physician, him or herself, could be held legally responsible for damages. But the best way of getting a fix on some of the legal issues is going to be to check out whatever licensing body is applicable in your state. In some states, that's going to be a Department of Motor Vehicles, a Bureau of Motor Vehicles, Division of Motor Vehicles. It might be part of the Department of Transportation. It might be part of a Department of Revenue. It might be part of a Secretary of State's office. There are any number of different variations here in the 50 states plus the District of Columbia. But in your state is going to be your state's licensing body is going to be a very helpful resource here. And to help sort of shorten the learning curve on this, I have compiled a 50 state guide to the various legalities where you can actually look up your state. It's not exhaustive, but it is going to, I think, help point you in the right direction of places that you can go for further information that are going to be specific to your state, maybe even contact information for people you could reach out to if you have further questions. And I'll put the link in the description for that particular site. I'll put it on the screen as well. And that's on my website, alzheimersproof.com. Now, a fifth issue is going to be the practical. So what I mean here by practical is going to be a couple of things, but the primary one is going to be if the loved one, if your loved one or you yourself are still in need of transportation and you're unable to drive or you feel like you can't safely operate a motor vehicle yourself, where do you turn? Now there's going to be a number of aspects to this and there's a number of places that you can go. I think I might even do a video just on this, but for the sake of completion here in this video, let me just mention a few. So there's obviously, there are the rideshare type applications like Uber and Lyft. Uber even has an Uber Central where even if the elderly person, the senior, let's say, does not have Uber, they don't have a smartphone or they don't have the Uber app or they don't have the ability to operate it, Uber Central allows a nursing home or a community to have an account that then is able to set up rides for the afflicted person without him or her having to do that legwork or that kind of administrative aspect of it, him or herself. Now there's also something called the Independent Transportation Network, Elder Care Locator, which I have mentioned in other videos. Elder Care Locator is another one that can help, help you get paired up with free transportation or if not free, lower cost transportation or at least transportation that you might be able to avail yourself of if you are in need of that kind of assistance. And then, again, Google is also just a helpful one, depending on your area. A Google search on senior rides or on senior transportation might be fruitful. Now, number six is going to be relational. So once you have gotten to a point maybe where you suspect or think or know that your loved one is no longer able to safely operate a motor vehicle, how do you talk to them about it? Can you talk to them about it? And I may do a video just on this, but one resource in particular that jumped out at me was from the website Help for Alzheimer's Families, and they actually have an article on talking with your afflicted loved one. But I know in some cases that kind of discussion is going to generate more heat than light, and in some cases it's going to cause difficulties, and if your loved one's memory capacity is eroded, as of course is generally the case with Alzheimer's disease, they might not remember having a conversation with you. They might not remember agreeing to not drive the car, even if they did. And so, one of the other things you're going to want to you're going to want to look at is going to be ways of restricting access to the vehicle. Whether it means taking the vehicle completely off the premises, whether it means locking it into the garage with multiple layers of security, whether it means actually placing a disabling device on the car so that even if the person gains access to it. They can't operate the thing, hiding the keys. There can be any number of different aspects here. And I kind of have an overview of the various interventions that can be performed in the course of a number of different posts on my website, alzheimersproof.com, and I'll put those up on the screen and kind of walk you through what each of them provides. And I know this is a very difficult and emotional subject. Driving is so fundamental to our sense of ourselves, to our independence and everything like that, but it is so important to keep a handle on your loved one's safety, not only for his or her own sake, but for the sake of everyone else on the road 
or everyone else in the vicinity. God forbid they drive up onto a sidewalk or drive through a storefront or any number of things that from time to time crop up in news reports. And so if you found something useful, even if it was hard, I ask that you just please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be alerted to new content as it becomes available. As I said, I intend to explore some of the further issues regarding communicating with family members, regarding various alternatives for transportation. And so if you click the notification bell, you'll be alerted to those pieces of content as they become available. But I thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again in another video, and I wish you all the best, whether it's you or your loved one who is afflicted. I wish you all the best in trying to make the best decisions possible, and I hope that some of the information that I've provided is of help to you.